Welcome to another World of Warcraft Cataclysm beta video. This is Chromar for TGN. Today we're going to be looking at Stone Core, the new five-man dungeon in Cataclysm. It's located in Deep Holm. You start out facing the, the door to the Temple of Earth and head up and to the left around the spire and you'll see the uh, entrance. Uh, once you explore it, of course, you can use the Dungeon Finder and that will allow you to simply warp to it. Now this is a fun instance. The bosses are significantly um, more complicated than Vortex Pinnacle and so are the trash mobs to be honest. Some of the trash mobs, especially the ogres, are practically many bosses in themselves. So, uh, and, and some of the pulls are even challenging. There's even a sentry mechanic that's kind of interesting and this is a normal dungeon by the way. Now our group is, uh, well, let's just say out gearing it by a bit, <laughs> so uh, it's going to be um, a little easier than probably it would be if you're attempting this at the proper level but it's still much harder than um, Vortex Pinnacle. Now you're going to see Millhouse Manistorm, you might remember him from Alcatraz, or Architraz, whatever it's called. So he's back. But anyway, what you want to do now is um, go ahead and mark him as your skull and you want to kill him first. He doesn't actually die. Instead what he does is he runs away. Now you see I have X marked on the Earth Shaper. Yeah, there we go. That's why I marked the Earth Shaper as X. He starts casting a spell that turns him into that giant rock monster, the Revenant guy. So you want to interrupt that spell before it goes off. Once he's turned into the rock monster, you can't stun him or anything to interrupt his dust storm, which causes you to have a increased 20% chance to miss. So you definitely want to make sure that he doesn't turn into that, uh, that, that monster. After you've killed the Earth Shaper, the remaining mobs are pretty easy. You got the Berserkers, which are very obnoxious. Um, if you're in melee and you see a Berserker spinning around immediately, they put up a stacking bleed dot, which kind of reminds me of um, a few different stacking bleed dots in the game from Whirlwind. I can think of, like, the guy, um, what's his name, Galdera, I believe, I, th I think put something on there. Uh, he's the troll boss in, um, in Zulfarak. But anyway, the next pull is going to be these Flares. Uh, they start casting ability called Flay, as you can see, which makes them attack very quickly right in front of them. Um, you don't want to stand there or else you'll get hit. The, um, they just basically attack really fast. You can stun them out of it, which I do a lot. Now, I, I'm standing here and taking hits because I'm trying to actually stun them, but um, what I should have done is just backed up and charged them. I'll be doing that more later on. But um, just if you're a melee, just don't stand in front of the Flay, please. Okay, moving on to the next pull. There's um, Manastorm, uh, or whatever his name is, again, so you still want to attack him first. The reason, main reason you want to attack him is just to get him to run away, that's all. You put a couple hits on him and he'll take off. But anyway, I uh, picked up the rest of the mobs, and this time I'm going to focus on uh, this Earth Shaper so he doesn't cast his spell. And there it is, he's casting it right now, so I'm going to interrupt that and prevent that from happening. If you're uh, playing a DPS and you have a stun or an interrupt or whatever, please assist the tank by stopping that from casting. Well, if you're playing anyone, don't let that go through, not just the melee. But anyway, so after killing these mobs, you're going to move on to the next pull. And things get a little hairy because there's actually a really nasty bug coming up, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, by the way, the big torrents there are the Wrathbringers. They cast an ability called Rage, uh, which is interruptible only by stun. Standard interrupts don't work. And it uh, just gives them a big damage buff. So I'd like to try to stun them before they cast it if I can, but it's not priority. So here what I've done is I've marked the Earth Shaper with Skull. Okay, here's where the bug happens. And this is pretty nasty. It's going to cause us to wipe, and it usually causes us to wipe, although I have survived it once. What happens is the Millhouse Manastorm, after taking some damage, will run off to the next group as normal. But what happens this time is he pulls like two groups on top of you. And what's worse is the Earth Shapers in those groups will cast their spell and turn into revenants. So you're going to have two groups with like two or three revenants total on top of you. Yeah, so that's not fun. And that's pretty much a guaranteed wipe. I mean, I have survived it like I said, but that was only because the group was really, really uh, over leveled and over geared. And because uh, we had a um, we had all range DPS, which I'm sure helped a lot too. But anyway, I'm, tr I'm trying to do here is attack um, uh, the guy last. Yeah, there we go. There, there comes the cavalry. So here comes all the bug mobs that are going to come attack you. Now, the, the reason I say this is definitely a bug is because these mobs aren't even, aren't even supposed to fight you. The last group there, you're supposed to you actually skip because of a mechanic which you'll see in just a moment. I don't want to spoil it for you. It's kind of funny. But anyway. Uh, so there we got two rock guys, two revenants, and uh, we held up pretty well here. I did use shield wall, I used last stand, I used frenzy regeneration, and so on and so on. And I uh, did, you know, I think I did pretty admirably here. 
but uh, and sort of the healer by the way the healer actually did an excellent job keeping me up practically forever um, the main thing that happened was the melee uh, we're, we're standing in the berserkers spin that that spinning uh, stacking dot I told you about and that caused them to die and there was no way the healer could keep up with that because they had like a million stacks of it so I finally died um, we did manage to take out the main group and uh, do some damage to the next one now there you go that's what's supposed to happen after rezzing up you come back and this giant worm like kills all those guys for you so that's why they say that they're bugged because you're not even supposed to fight them now this boss is uh, is very interesting he's not hard or anything I mean I'm sure I know he's harder on heroic uh, there's videos of him on heroic which show he's very hard but on, on normal mode he's very forgiving um, you can mess up a lot and it doesn't really matter he does two main mechanics one is the burrow which you'll see in a minute and the other is the crystal shard which is going on right now in the top right of the screen those crystal shards fall on the ground and they're basically spikes that you're not supposed to stand on and um, it's really easy to move out of them and they're very forgiving on normal mode so if you get hit with them just get out of it and you'll be fine other than that he doesn't really do anything uh, we'll wait for the burrow phase so you can see the burrow part there it goes once he burrows now he's gonna spawn little ads that are very weak and you can just collect them and I mean I've been killing them with thunderclap and shockwave and uh, he also burrows and knocks you around but the damage from the burrow from getting hit by the burrow is pretty inconsequential so right here really you're not really taking hardly any damage at all there's really nothing here that can take you out um, in heroic it's a little different and although we are a little bit over level I mean I'm at 85 pre bay and all this is uh, still not gonna be that hard even on even with your even if you're at the right level, even if you're at the, um, what is it for this dungeon? I think it's uh, it's marked as 81 through 85 and you're looking in your dungeon finder, but um, I think it's like an 83 instance, average. Anyway, so back to this boss here. Once he pops back up, you just start laying down the damage again. You don't really need to bloodlust in this guy. Um, I suppose you can, but I'd hate to have, you know, pop a bloodlust and then have him burrow and waste most of it. But he goes down. Um, he only went down for one burrow. I think the burrows are timed, not not tied to HP, because on one run we had well, even worse DPS than this, and they um, and he burrowed twice. So I'm pretty sure it's timed. But anyway, moving on. I got a little lost here. These rocks here crumble. I was like, where's the entrance? Because I forgot about the rocks. Now what I want to show you here is how not to pull this. This is the cautionary tale. Um, there's a, a patrolling rock giant back there, and then there's two flares to the side. So uh, it's very tempting to pull these flares ahead of time and try to kill them before the rock giant gets there. Uh, but watch this. Watch what happens here. I'll just let you see. Okay, you see target nine in line of sight. You see that? I was trying to charge them. They were perfectly in my line of sight. It's just because the camera was behind the stupid rocks, I couldn't charge them. Now, this actually happened to me before, but while filming this, I went ahead and made the same mistake because honestly, I thought it was just a fluke. I thought I was behind a pillar or something. This time I made sure it wasn't behind a pillar, and it was just the camera positioning that caused charge to not work. So what a bunch of baloney. But anyway, uh, because the stone giant pats all the way back to the rocks, he's going to add on you if you pull the flares first. So don't pull the flares first, pull the rock giant first. Now this rock giant uh, is pretty nasty. He hits like a truck, and he does a spell called Earthquake, and another one called Crystal Shards. Now let me first talk about the Crystal Shards, because they're the more dangerous thing. They put a debuff on you that increases all damage taken by 50%. And he puts like a beam on the ground. If you stand in it, the crystal lands and it hits you or something like that. Bottom line is if you see a bunch of red flying crystals around, don't let them hit you because they're going to give you that debuff. The second thing is the Earthquake, and these two work together. Um, the Earthquake, and you'll see a crystal here in a second. Oh, no, never mind. Not till the next one. Anyway, sorry, the, um, the Earthquake just does a big AoE and um, if you've been increased by a, uh, one or two stacks of the debuff, because you can get them stacked by the way, and if it's influenced by the uh, debuff then it's basically just going to kill the crap out of you. Now for the second one, I was much smarter, waited for him to come and uh, pull him away from their flares. There's three flares over there. I have in the past pulled the flares back separately, but it's really dangerous so I decided to just play it safe and pull the stone giant ahead of time. There's a quake. It didn't do much to me because I don't have the debuff. Um, if you look very carefully on your screen, you'll see that the uh, Death Knight, I believe it is, uh, one of those, one of my teammates has the, the. There's a crystal shard. There he is. So stay away from that thing. Um, you can actually kill it as well if you're ranged DPS, but don't melee it because it'll just explode on you and give you the debuff. And then you can pull the three flares in peace. But you've seen enough flare action, so I'm going to skip that battle. Moving on to the second boss, this guy's a super pushover. I think this is like probably the most undertuned boss in the instance. Probably one of the most undertuned that I've even that I've fought anywhere. 
He doesn't really do anything. Um, he has a couple of abilities. One is a conal AoE in front of him, like a, a breath. So just face him away from the group. Um, he does not have standard dragon abilities like cleave and tail whip. And I have tested this in a previous run. I actually had the healer stand in danger zones and see if they got hit, and they didn't. So I can confirm that if you're a DPS, you do not have to worry about your positioning as long as you're not facing the mouth, as long as you're not right in front of them. You'll be fine. Now what he does is he lifts off and he drops these stout, these um, slag tights all over the place. But you have tons of time because you get uh, you just don't stand in the shadows. That's all you have to do is make sure you're not standing in one of the shadows. He also drops little fire, uh, I don't know, uh, I guess you call them like a fire void zone, it's just what it is, it's a void zone, it's a circle of don't stand there because it's on fire, don't stand there and you won't get hurt, so it's not really all that challenging. If you're having trouble with not standing in fire, then um, you probably should practice this game a bit more because that's not that big of a deal. Anyway, so we used Bloodlust here, but we didn't need to. You're actually probably way better off saving Bloodlust for the next boss. Maybe, but the next boss is a little more difficult and has phases, so well, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So now he's in his liftoff phase. Now here I'm going to demonstrate you. If you look very closely, you see I actually got a shield slam and a devastate off while he was flying. And yes, you can get underneath him, jump and jump up, and you'll be in melee range for your abilities. I don't know if that's a bug or what, but you know, once you try this, give it a shot. Hopefully it'll work. So this scrub will go down here in just a moment. Hopefully they buff this guy, um, give him some standard dragon tactics, and I don't know, let's do something else. Maybe make that breath attack more serious damage, make the slag tights fall faster, I don't know. Okay, this next corridor is tons of fun. That sentry that you just saw there, um, this may br uh, bring back memories of Zula Man. Um, the sentries there are just like those. Remember in Zula Man they would actually go and play a drum and that would wake up uh, that would call a bunch of reinforcements in, and here, instead of playing a drum, they just simply run over to another group and alert them. So you want to make sure you kill the sentries immediately. This sentry here is stuck in this group, so I'm just going to charge it and kill it before I move on and start tanking everything else, just to be safe. If you have DPS that's awake, you don't need to do that, but of course in a pug you never want to be too careful. Fortunately, as I saw, found out that the warlock in the group is actually very good and attentive, so I didn't really need to focus on killing the sentries myself. But since it was a pug, I did anyway. So moving on, uh, the X here I have targeted on a rift conjurer. These are nasty little guys. They um, they don't do much damage, but they cast this in this demon portal where they summon imps, and that's bad news. You don't want that to happen. Now you're not going to see this on this run because I was able to stop all the imp portals, but in a previous run I got really messed up by him. Now here you see the ogres. I mentioned them very briefly in the beginning of the video. These ogre bruisers, or whatever they're called, are really nasty. They're like mini bosses. As you see, they leap all over the place, and you can barely keep them on you. They're um, they are tankable. I mean, they have a normal aggro table, as far as I can tell, but it's still very hard to keep threat on them because they uh, jump around so much. And while they're jumping around, you're not hitting them, but your your ranged DPS allies are. So it's going to be difficult. You might want to switch your vigilance if you're playing a warrior to uh, to a ranged DPS for this. Although I didn't do that here, and it kind of cost me because I kept losing aggro. Plus, he just knocks you around all the time. It's very obnoxious. Um, one strategy you could try, although it's not great strategy, is uh, having everyone bunch up. That way, he won't get away from you. But then again, um, your spellcasters are not going to like that at all because they're going to be interrupted constantly by the knockback. However you want to do, it's fine. But once that nasty guy finally goes down, um, you can move on. Um, he also does a stacking debuff, by the way, if you didn't see it there. It increases the damage taken, physical damage taken by the tank, by uh, 5% per stack, and it stacks up. As far as I can tell, it stacks up forever. I think I had like 12 stacks there or something like that, so it gets pretty pretty powerful. Now here I'm waiting for the sentry to come out. I was going to mark it with a skull, but uh, the warlock here is Johnny on the spot and actually k killed it uh, before... I could do that, and then the second sentry the same thing. So, if you have attentive DPS like this guy, then uh, you'll be fine. But if you have crappy DPS, then it's gonna you have to be, you know take charge and make sure that you um, kill those sentries. So here I'm gonna mark this conjurer, and I'm gonna wait for this uh, third sentry. Just when you thought you were done with sentries, another one appears, right? I'm gonna wait for this third sentry to come back, and I'm gonna use gag order to pull them back. Since the rift conjurer is the only caster in the group, it shouldn't be too hard.